You look like a changed man. <laughs> I've been trying to get a hold of you, communicate. I was like, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I was looking forward to the mastermind group. I was like, okay, I'm going to find out. And then it's like, where is he? And I don't know what. Like, that's just absolutely off the plane. <laughs> it's actually my bad. I, I had thought actually for whatever reason that the, the meeting was a day after I got back. No worries. And it wasn't until I saw yeah. Derek's message and was like, I'm sure no, or Scott. I was like, oh shit. I, I was literally on the plane, just landed at Pearson. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. How was it? Oh, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, challenging. Uh, I got everything I needed from it, you know. Every, everything. So, so, like, you, can you, like, can you just send, send us through? Like, you arrived, you're, you're, you're packed. Like, what's. First, yeah. So, I, so. It was the long story. I love the long story. Okay. So, the long story. We got an hour. So, you know? so we got, okay. So, perfect. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll even go back to about two weeks before we sure. left, right? And I had re-injured my back. I don't remember if I told you, but I re-injured oh. my back. And How? Oddly, oddly enough, I was doing a back strengthening exercise. Yeah, okay. So nothing strenuous, just body weight yeah. movements. And, you know, the next day, I, I felt the tweak. The next day, it started to hurt a bit more and more. And, you know, obviously, I was very worried because it was two weeks before leaving. And then, mm. anyways, getting closer to the date, my back was really starting to hurt. So I had that you know, physical and mental pressures thinking to myself, okay, you know, A, I spent thousands of dollars to do this and B, am I going to be able to actually do it? Yeah, but, and it's the last so, minute. Yeah, so I got some medication from my doctor, like an anti-inflammatory, which I don't like taking medication at all, but mm. I decided, you know what, I better take it to be safe than sorry. So I hopped on the plane, popped a couple of uh, naproxens, and overall the flight was pretty decent. Back wasn't hurting too much, which is good. And, so, uh, so, so you left with a with a sore back. Yeah, yeah, no, and I wouldn't call it sore. I call it more of an injured back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like actual, a pulled muscle. Yeah, yeah, I pulled muscle. Okay, and I actually went to my doctor on Monday to get an MRI done because it's been it's been ongoing for the past two years. But uh, but yeah, so fast forward, hopped on the plane, twenty two hour ride there, you know, multiple planes, three planes, stopovers, and. Uh, yeah, made it to Kathmandu. I was very happy about that. Like I said, the pain wasn't too bad. Like it wasn't excruciating as it was before I left because of the medication, of course. Yeah. Um, but I was very excited that you know the pain was bearable, and uh, yeah, I was just happy to make it there. So got to the airport, had someone pick me up, which was great. Walked out of the airport. There was a sign saying Brian. I was like, okay, perfect. I'm not going to get lost or kidnapped. <laughs> and uh, what were you going as a group? No, so I went, so yes, there was about five of us that went down from, you know, all over the different, all over, um, you know, different countries. Yeah. As you know, Quentin went down too, yep. but he left, when did he leave? He he actually got there maybe three or four hours before me, so I, I traveled by myself. But oh, yeah. okay. And, uh, which was the first for me to travel that far by myself too. You know, you don't, you get a lot of time to think. About yourself, your goals, you know, <laughs> yeah, all that good stuff. So that that was good too, right? And then, uh, so yeah, got to the airport, got to the hotel. Sorry, hotel was beautiful. People are absolutely beautiful. I got greeted um, by a couple of the hotel employees with you know the regular fruit juice and very kind work. Mm -hmm. people, people. In, in Kathmandu, yeah, Kathmandu, yep. the capital of Nepal, and uh, spent uh, maybe an hour or two unpacking. And oh, I should say, I was also very happy that my luggage came because as a climber, if your luggage doesn't make it there, then you are you're in big trouble. So both my luggages came on time, which was fantastic. Um, but anyway, so unpacked, got a text message because we have a WhatsApp group, all the climbers mm -hmm. saying that they were on the rooftop. So come on up and went up and met to about three or four of the climbers that that um that I was meeting up there. So you know, it was just amazing, you know, hugs and just seeing everybody for the first time in, I don't know, past year, basically since we've climbed Kilimanjaro. Yeah, okay, so th these are people from, from Kilimanjaro that you met. Yeah, yes. And we stayed okay. in contact. You know, That's just, cool. Yeah, very cool. So a couple of months coming back from after Kilimanjaro. Well, you know, I, I can't remember who threw out there. One of the climbers threw out there, why don't we do Everest Space Camp? <laughs> and, and, you know, we all piled on and said, let's do it. So about five of us from 
Kilimanjaro decided to do it. So we started up a group chat for Everest. And I think we started planning back in August of 2023. Mm -hmm. So we first booked the tour and then we started buying our flights and so on. So it was great because, again, I hadn't seen these people in over a year. So it was, it was awesome just, you know, hugs, kisses, and just, you know, sitting down, having a, well, I don't really drink that much, but, you know, having a, whatever I had, a fruit juice, yeah. and just hanging out, catching up, which was amazing. And it was just a good energy, just amazing energy, seeing everybody glow and and uh, just ready to, you know, take on this amazing challenge. So anyways, fast forward to the next day, a couple other people came in, and then we had our first um, this meeting as a larger group so there was 11 of us climbing 11 okay yeah 11 of us and like i said i knew about five or six people beforehand so it's kind of a you know time to orientate yourself with the new folks and we have a meet and greet we went on then we went out to dinner again you know you build that relationship mm -hmm. with everyone get to know everyone so that was awesome and then uh yeah it was our last night at the hotel then we took an early flight i think we left at 6 30 a.m to the airport to Kathmandu airport where we flew from Kathmandu to a smaller city named Lucknow, which is known to have one of the most dangerous airports or at least before the most dangerous airport in the world um, because it's it's about uh, there's about seven or eight thousand feet above sea level the mm. runway is probably maybe a hundred meters okay right and if you miss the runway you just fall off a cliff literally and of course, you're dealing with winds, clouds, etc. So the plane got delayed a couple a couple times um, because of the poor weather conditions. But we were fortunate that we were able to take off, and uh, yeah, we made it there, made it safely, and uh, yeah, started our hike, started our first journey together. Start mm -hmm. weather was pretty well, good. So what would that what does that look like? So you're 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 walking what an average of eight hours a day? Yeah, you're probably walking anywhere between six to eight hours a day. Okay. And it's comfortable pace. It's you know. It's... Well, it's that's a good question, Renee, because generally you're you should walk at a slower pace when you're at higher altitude. Mm -hmm. right? How did you go out. with uh, with like um, uh, just just the altitude? Like your breathing. How was your breathing when you when you first arrived? Is it deep? yeah? So Are you breathing was half? fine for the first day, day and a half. Breathing was fine. We all felt pretty good. Yeah. Are you acclimatized? Like how long does it take? It, it it takes several days to acclimatize, but because of because we were only at like I said, maybe seven thousand feet above sea level, which is it sounds high, but it's not that high mm -hmm. um, relative to where we were going. So you you don't usually feel the effects of altitude. Sickness. So seven thousand, you're going to. We went to about I think seventeen thousand at base camp. Seventeen thousand is base camp. Yeah. yeah. So you're going from seven to seventeen thousand in a mat like ten thousand. Yeah. That's that's fast. That's fast, yeah, but in a matter of 12 days, which is not good. So you get two days to acclimatize, yeah, which is much better than Kilimanjaro because we went higher than that in seven days. So at least with this trip, we had a total of 12 days, a couple of days to just acclimatize, which really helps. Mm -hmm. um, you might remember when I climbed Kilimanjaro, I got extremely sick the last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, whereas this journey, I did get sick in the beginning, but it wasn't because of the altitude. It was because of something that I ate. So a couple of couple of members got sick. So the the, the health standards will say aren't the same as they are over here in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it a fruit? Was to it put it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it was the water or meat, but yeah. Uh, it, it passed through you, luckily. It did pass through me. It did pass through me eventually, but. On that same day, I got extremely sick. I threw up. Oh, felt, felt very weak, lightheaded. Thought I was gonna, um, thought I was gonna faint a number of times. Really? Yeah. So that that kind of brought back some PTSD from my time climbing last year. Because, <laughs> as I, you know, as I said, I got really sick, and yeah, you know, you start going through that mental struggle. And you know, I was thinking to myself, "Oh my gosh, I'm on day one, and I'm already feeling sick." <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, Twelve more days of this. Yeah, it's my trip over before it started, but luckily it passed. Um, and, and clearly, there are some people who just don't make it. They're just out yeah. of sickness, tired, and they just they're just not fit enough for whatever reason. Were yeah. there a few people in the group that that just didn't make it? Surprisingly, everyone in our group made it. Nice. Uh, now, we all had our different challenges. So there was one uh, person who young, pretty young person, he's like twenty eight. Um, he struggled right through. 
um, from beginning to end, which which I thought just, just wasn't yeah. uh, the training didn't have the training didn't I don't, well he didn't train. Uh, I don't know if he thought because he was fairly young, you know, he, 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 it would be a brace for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, he struggled from beginning to end. And as we got higher, he struggled with altitude as well. So he, he was in rough shape. So you had two or three people that were in really rough shape. Um, but I think we all struggled at, you know, at different times. Mm -hmm. Definitely was no easy, uh, easy hike. But like I said, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Um, and, and it was just great to to see the support that you get from yeah support. yeah that's that's one thing i remember from last time i said you know, yeah, what was yeah, the big so, big thing and you're like the support the support it would have not been possible and it, it's like a reflection on on life itself it is like we it need is. support it's so 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 important so important like you said we need support whether it's with family whether it's in you know our businesses again going back to what i was saying before having the right people around you right people that mm -hmm. are going to support you people that are qualified to to help you get to your goal, right? Because like anything else, you know, we often think, especially as entrepreneurs, that we can do everything on our own and yeah. we sometimes start down that rabbit hole and, and then we end up just losing time, getting frustrated when really we should be leaning on people that, that are close to us or, or people that just have the right skill set that we that, that's able to support us. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So, so, so what was day two like? So so you base camp. So you're not, not you're, you're day one, you're, you're, you're just camping anywhere? Yeah, so day one, again, a little different than Kilimanjaro in that we didn't sleep in tents. We slept in these huts and houses called tea houses. Okay. Right? We'll call it we'll call it a motel for Western standards, but they're they're called tea houses. But you know, no insulation, no heat, except for the <laughs> except for the odd um, furnace. So it's extremely cold. I'm still sleeping, I'm sleeping on a bed, but I'm sleeping in my sleeping bag. With my hat, my toque. Oh, my, like well, how my, cold? We're talking like ten degrees. What, what? Uh, so it started at sixty degrees, and the last night was probably. And we're talking indoors. Yeah, it ended up being six degrees. <laughs> six, six degrees. degrees. Yeah, and even six degrees doesn't sound as cold, but yeah. I can assure you, when you're in the enclosed area, six degrees is absolutely freezing. Especially if you're there for a long period, like eight hours. Like sure, right. outside six degrees you're moving around but then you go inside you're trying to trying to sleep exactly uh, yeah that's that's not the best so how did you sleep so surprisingly i slept pretty well i mean there are well sorry let me, let me backtrack that's not good <laughs> I, I, I was comfortable but because of the jet lag so can't man do the fall it's a 10 hour time difference okay but every night i was up i'd get up about 2 a.m I stay up from two to four on average, go back oh. for an hour. And this yeah. is basically my entire hike, maybe minus the last day where I was able to sleep until 5 a.m. So it was really, really rough. Um, Were there yeah. other people that, that arrived earlier to get acclimatized and also the time difference as well? Because that, wouldn't that the, make the trip easier? We did arrive earlier. Myself, Quentin, um, Maybe one other climber. We arrived first. We arrived maybe two days before. Okay. Right, but it didn't help. It didn't, it didn't help. help. The time difference was so, was so great. Oh, would you need like three, four hours, three, four days? Is that at least, at least? And then you know you also have the added stress that you're, you're going through, mental and physical, of just yeah. dealing with the climb, dealing with the lack of oxygen, the physical stress. I think that doesn't that doesn't help you sleep either, right? No. Okay. Not to mention, of course, again, you know, just good old fashioned jet lag. So, but but I made the best of it, right? Like I, for sure, for sure. I took the time to think. I took the time to reflect. Uh, probably spent a little too much time on Netflix, um, but uh, but yeah, it, it was fine. It was manageable. And, and and any 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 insights or any any things that came out, you're like, you know, I need to focus more on this, or what did you learn from it in the end? Or yeah, so great question, great question. I think a couple of things. It allowed me clarity in that we first first off being appreciative of what i already have mm. right i think us entrepreneurs and you know we we're always go 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 we want to build we want to yeah. create we want to expand which is great right but just seeing how people live different culture oh um you know what their standard of living is 
um, what's normal to them and knowing what I have, right? Yeah. And just living that life for what about 15 days really allowed me to appreciate how fortunate I am and, and just mm. how fortunate I am to be born in Canada, mm -hmm. right? I have so much opportunity. So did you have helpers carrying stuff up? Yes. Yeah. So we had, we had three, they're called Sherpas, help us. Yeah, Sherpas, that's right. Help us up. And uh, again, couldn't have done it without them. So we were carrying our backpacks that were probably, you know, 10, 12 pounds. And they would carry our actual duffel bag, which is probably about, what, 30, 40 pounds. And they were just flying by us, right? We had our hiking poles, <laughs> our, our boots, and they, yeah. they're, they're in their running shoes or their boots, and they're just flying. Flying they're used to this. This is this they're is, used to this. Yeah, this They've done it hundreds of times. Their their lungs are acclimatized um, um, to the lack of oxygen. So this is this is you know business as usual for them, mm -hmm. right? But, but going back to what you you were saying again, I think it's just the appreciation for how fortunate we are, and that it's okay to take a step back and relax and and be grateful for what mm -hmm. you know, in my case um, I built. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that was probably one of the biggest takeaways. I think another takeaway was being around great people. Right. So you know, Renee, that I'm writing a book, and I've had some challenges with. Oh know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had some challenges with the person that I was initially um, helping me to support support me with it. So I was talking with one of my one of the climbers, mm -hmm. uh, and I was telling him about that. You know, just the whole the whole experience. He's written several books and. And he's like, yeah, you know, that's normal to experience that. And um, anyways, long story short, he was able to connect me with someone that has a lot of cool. experience writing real estate books and so on. Cool. So that, that's a great positive that came out of it as well. I actually have a meeting with her today at six. Nice. Awesome. And, and she has a lot of experience and with, again, writing books, writing real estate books and supporting the support process, I should say, not writing books, supporting the process. So very excited about that. And again, it's just being around the right people, right? And, and it and does make a huge difference. Huge, huge difference. It's, huge difference. it's just right. as, it's just as important as the support. Being supported by who by whom, what their mindset is, what their goals are, what their their ambitious, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And then too, again, just being able to not think about life as I know it, which is and what I mean by that is just the our, we all have our regular routine, right? Mm -hmm. That, that we, we live by, we get up, we walk, we exercise, we check email and, and yeah. so, so forth. And being able to do something completely different, being able to be engulfed in nature, um, seeing those amazing views and, you know, pushing yourself was just amazing. Just, it just was just an amazing experience being able to get up each day knowing that you're going to conquer something totally different than what you're used to was, was mm -hmm. also pretty amazing. And, you know, it's funny. I sat down about a half an hour ago and I was like, I looked out the window and I live basically, you know, I live in Toronto, but like yeah. probably so uptown Toronto and it's yeah. just condos everywhere and yeah. houses everywhere. And I, and I said to my wife and I that, you know, I said, I think I'm ready to leave and just not be around so much I said, con you know, concrete jungle. Concrete, yeah, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, but just, just you know, and not that I want to run in the bushes and, and, and be a caveman, but just a different way of life, different pace of life. Yeah, and and and, 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 and it's there's nothing wrong with living in Toronto, and many people do, but I mean, myself, I grew up in that area in Toronto, and that that was the norm. Yeah. So uh, it's easy to just see things as normal. But you saw you saw another opportunity. You saw something else. Exactly, something that I enjoyed. And yeah, got great pleasure from it, right. So it's like, where? How do you strike that balance, and what does that balance look like? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well put, well put. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, just, just again, I'm, I'm very blessed and fortunate that I have the opportunity to be able to do things like this. Mm -hmm. and what was the most challenging part about it? The most challenging part I would say is the amount of stairs. So Kilimanjaro was a pretty gradual hike up, mm -hmm. sent up. Um, so you know you're going on an incline slowly but surely, and you're hiking through the different zones. Whereas Everest Base Camp, 
you can easily spend on each day three or four hours just climbing stairs on an incline, <laughs> right? Which is extremely challenging. Did you train? Like, you trained a lot of walking. Did you train on stairs as well? I didn't because I didn't realize that it had so many stairs, let alone <laughs> stairs. Now, I did, I did climb um, hills, right? Which was yep. that helped a lot. But I didn't do actual, like, I didn't go to Stairmaster or go up several flights of stairs in the apartment building or anything. Yeah. I didn't do it. If I could do it over again, I would have definitely done that because that was extremely challenging. Extremely challenging. And then you're dealing with, you know, 30 plus degrees heat. So oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're carrying your backpack. You're, you're climbing for six or hiking for six to eight hours a day. And then just one stairs after another. So it's really about taking it step by step. And and, and this, yeah. this goes along with life too, right? Just re- literally putting your head down, focusing, taking mm. literally or focusing on one step at a time and not looking up at the destination. And literally that's what Doc takes through. Um, each stretch is not focusing on the end or, or looking at the end, just taking it one step at a time. Mm. And I thought that really helped. Were there were there times where you're like, I don't know about this. I'm I'm I just need a break from this. This this is too much. Need a break? Yeah, absolutely. I think we all had we all had that, <laughs> that, that experience at, at one point or another. Um, but you but again, you you push through. You see the people around you. Um, that are what, 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 did you stop on the side, or does everybody stop with you when you when you're? So you, it, it, a number of things can happen. If you're really tired and you need a break then you'll have one of the porters or Sherpas, Sherpas, they'll stay back with you and you can okay. rest. And typically you'll see what will happen is a number of people will either you know, require a break, right? So two or three people may stop, the Sherpas will stop with them for 10 or 15 minutes and then they'll catch up to the group either at, at lunch or at another um, another break. Mm-hmm. But everyone has a different um, you know, level of, of um, ability in terms of their skill set right so i said some people didn't train yeah you had people that trained you had people that are generally in good shape because they exercise a lot so you so again and and i found this a little surprising too so you see people of all different shapes sizes tackling everest right Mm -hmm. it's not a group of you know super fit buff people okay trying to so, what, what were their reasons? What, what were the most people's reasons for for doing this? To challenge themselves, right? It, so most many, of, everybody wants to challenge themselves. Yeah, yeah. Most people want to challenge themselves. You had some people that just wanted to try something different, but most people there wanted to challenge themselves. And I, I think it's for the most part, it's a certain type of personality. You know, we we joke many times that we're like, why why are we doing this to ourselves? Yeah, <laughs> right. Because it's so challenging and tough, um, but. I think it takes a certain type of personality to want to do something like that. What uh, would you describe that personality? I think very driven, okay with being uncomfortable. I think yeah. that's probably the big one. Very comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, or at least working towards being uncomfortable. Um, and people that are looking to build resilience, right? Because you have the option of either A, spending a week or two weeks at an all-inclusive resort, laying on the beach, sipping pina coladas. That's, that sounds boring. Very right. boring to me. To people no. like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very boring. Right? Or you have the option of going, you know, whitewater rafting or or climbing Everest and yeah. you know, going to base camp. And, and that might be the extreme. And I tell people this a lot, right? Again, I do this to build resilience, to practice being uncomfortable. But you don't need to climb you know, a mountain to do it. Right, mm-hmm. it can just be anything that makes you uncomfortable, right? So if you're afraid of heights, maybe you do that C and yeah. tower walk around, or right? It's whatever makes you uncomfortable as an individual is what I think you need to do in order to start getting used to being uncomfortable and dealing with that stress. So, so how how has this experience changed you? Great question. So, at at certain points throughout the hike, I remember saying to myself, you know. My gosh, I got sick. I had diarrhea. I was throwing up. Yeah. So another day, I remember saying to myself how exhausted I was. I remember another day saying, "My gosh, my room looks terrible. I can't sleep." You know, another day I was struggling just with sleeping. My back started to hurt. 
um, towards the end of it. And there was just one challenge after another or obstacle <laughs> that happened. One thing right? after another. One thing after another. One pain. Yeah. And then I remember saying, I don't remember what day it was, but it was closer towards the end of the trip, say maybe day 10 or so. I remember saying to myself, Brian, this is why you're doing it. This is life, right? <laughs> you have all these variables that happen to you throughout yeah. life that weren't expected. And now you have to deal with it. You have to come up with the best way to deal with it and push through. And it was kind of like a light bulb moment. And then I stopped complaining and thinking like that and say, okay, this is awesome. Excellent. Again, this is why I came to deal with these challenges, to, to again, to be resilient when these challenges happen, because it was exactly like life for me. Yeah. You know I mean, so many things happen in our personal life, our business life that we didn't expect, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're planners, we try to map things out. There's always obstacles. There's always challenges. There's always something always. that's going to go wrong. The idea that it's everything's going to go fine once I get there—it's it's silly. It's never, never the same. It, never. It, there's always difficulties along the way. It's how we perceive those difficulties and how we deal with them that make us stronger and better to persist and keep on going. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. And that's where I had you know, the light bulb moment. I had to check myself and say, Brian, this is perfect. This is why you came. This is what you, this is what you wanted. Me. This is what you wanted. Exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. You know, again, life's not going to be perfect. Um, your projects aren't going to be perfect. Your, your yeah. relationships aren't going to be perfect. But when a challenge happens, which it will, you know, how do you react? You know, have you been in this situation before? Right? How are you going to react when you're uncomfortable? And it was just, it was such a, it was such a good feeling to go through that mental thought process mm. and then to be comfortable with that, with all these different things. When, when you climbed Kilimanjaro, you told me that now you're able to withstand more discomfort and have bigger visions. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, the major difference here is that when I going into Everest, I was I had more confidence. Okay. Because I, I, I mean, be, I'm not having no, Gerald, you never camped before. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> so right like, exactly. Hey, I camped, I've, I've camped already. So I've, I've, I've never died. camped before. Exactly. <laughs> at at, uh, at Kilimanjaro. Whereas when I was preparing and climbing Everest, I, I felt more confident because I did Kilimanjaro. So yeah. again, life lesson, right? It's like you have to put yourself in these situations and then you will build comfort, you will build confidence. Right, you will have the experience to leverage in life, in business, you know, in relationships. Um, so because of that, I just mentally felt um, a lot more comfortable. Now, of course, the, I I did still there was still a lot of unease going mm -hmm. into it because again my back was hurting and it was still a totally different kind of climb. Did your back hurt the whole time? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Now because I was taking medication, it it was more than manageable. So I wasn't in, I wasn't in pain, mm. especially for for the majority of it. The last two days, like I said, I really started feeling it, and then the, I even after the climb, that's when I I was in a lot of pain. But mm. the climb was done, so I was fine. How did you? How did so you were in pain after the climb? But what about your muscle? Like what? what how did it feel after mm. you were done? Or so what, maybe I should go back. What about when you get to when you get to base camp? How, how's that experience? Great question. Um, I, again, I feel as I was climbing towards base camp, so maybe an hour away, you can see the sign that says Everest Base Camp. I started literally smiling with myself. And I was smiling because, not, not because I made it, but because, and I think I touched on this a little earlier, is that I feel like I had mild PTSD because of what happened to me the last mm -hmm. time of Kilimanjaro. So the fact that not only did I make it, which was great, but that I also made it without getting extremely sick due to altitude, right? Was very, was just very rewarding to me, right? It was, it was just a self accomplishment, right? And again, just going back to life, it's you know, push yourself so you could be a better version of yourself. Don't compare mm -hmm. yourself to other people, right? So that mm -hmm. that gratitude and joy that it brought me to know that, hey, I did a bit better this time, right? A lot better this time, I would say, um, relative to how I performed last year was was just an overwhelming um, joy of emotion that 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 I experienced for about an hour leading up to it. Like it, it was it was so rewarding for me. So rewarding. Because so you've been rewarding. training for this for what 
six months or so. Yeah, yeah, about to hit six months. Now, you know, I, I'm relative. I'm in relatively good shape, so it was just minor tweaks. Like again, I started doing longer walks, whereas mm -hmm. I would do short cardio for half an hour, and I started climbing small mountains. So really, ski hills. I would go up and down. And, and what would you do differently if you had to do it again? What I would do differently is I would definitely find somewhere that I could do stairs. So maybe 20, 30 flight of stairs, um, you know, at least for an hour or two every day. Yeah. Not every day, maybe two or three times a week. But other than that, that's the only change I would make, from, um, I guess, from a, from a workout perspective. Because otherwise, I, I think I, I performed very well. Uh, my body felt much better afterwards. You know, the only is issue I'm dealing with now is that I, I burnt really, I got burnt really bad, so I'm peeling like nobody's business. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, like nobody. I've never peeled like this before. So other than that, but and I did use sunscreen. I was lathering yeah. two or three times a day. But you still, you still uh, got a sunburn. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, but other did, than that, I, did you lose weight? No, I didn't. So it's funny. We were all we were all thinking about that, right? As soon as we got back to the hotel, we all jumped on the scale, <laughs> and I was basically the exact same weight that I was when I left, maybe a pound off, which is surprising. Okay. We still did eat really well. We ate a well, lot. What's, what's the food? The, the, the Sherpas are cooking for you as well. So the tea houses they have they have um, they have cooks there. Okay. And you know you can eat anything from you know Western French fries, pizza. They have a lot, a lot of folks there are vegetarian, so you have a yep. lot of vegetarian dishes. You know, you have your curries, um, your, your tiki masala, so like a butter chicken, right? Because there's a lot of in, uh, Indian influence. Okay. Um, so a lot of the meals that you would get in India or even here um, in different areas, they have them there. And then there's also influence from the, from the Chinese side as well, right? So what, it's, it's were you were you passing people along the way down as well? Yeah, yeah, passing people on the way up and on the way down. And obviously the feeling is very different. Like when you're coming down, you're you're at that point where you're like, you know, thank God I made it. Yeah. Right. So when you see those people going up, you can you you understand the challenges that they're going through and will go through. So it's really a lot, it, you know, you're you're saying to everyone, you're saying, Great, you're almost there. You know what I mean? This is what you're gonna You're encouraging them. So you're going you're down, you're them. encouraging them yeah. going up. Exactly. So it's quite it's quite funny actually. So you're coaching them, you're coaching them as they go up and giving them words of encouragement, really. Yeah. Right. Um, so so yeah. So that, that was that was a big difference. Yeah. And, and so when you get to um, before leaving, is there a leader that that leads it, or are there people that kind of go, okay, this is this is what you're going to be expecting. We're going to be doing this. So it's like a schedule. Who who runs the show when you before you, as you walk along? We booked through a company, a tour, a tour company named mm -hmm. G Adventure, and absolutely you have a different share of us, and then you have someone that's called a CEO, okay. and they're the ones that you know are responsible for logistics. They're the ones that are responsible for exactly what you said. They give a like big accommodation, DVD, food, accommodation, yeah, scheduling, accommodation, scheduling. They do a debrief at the end of the day, a debrief in the morning, a briefing in the morning. This is what to expect. This is how to dress. This is what the mm -hmm. weather's like. This is what you should consider. Today is going to be, um, you know, very steep or more steps. So you should probably use your poles or, again, just giving you a rundown of what to expect. Um, and then, again, same thing at the end of the day. Okay, great. This is what you could um, expect tomorrow. This is how you should dress. You're probably not going to sleep well because we're so high. So you mm. might want to take it next. And, like, at what time do you start walking? Or what's, what's like, a daily schedule? Like, how does a daily look like day so typically walking. we're waking up around 6 a.m okay we'll eat breakfast which which 6 a.m which is technically what 12 o'clock in just north america it would be about two o'clock yeah okay yeah and uh you know you get up you brush your teeth you put your clothes on you have breakfast for about 15 minutes and then you're out the door hiking six to eight hours and what's nice is you do get breaks along the way. A lot of breaks, actually. I was surprised at how many breaks we got on the way there. But mm -hmm. but uh, so that that was nice. And then you know you hike for six or eight hours. You'll stop for lunch, which is nice. Eat for about an hour or so, and then get to camp. Say around you know, anywhere from two to three o'clock in the afternoon, and then 
you're okay. relaxing. And then that, but after three, you're just kind of relaxing. There's not much. You're, what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing after that? Yeah, I'm usually just relaxing. I mean, people usually take some time, go to their room to to um, just relax, get some quiet time. Then we'll come back out, we'll play cards, um, mm. you know, watch TV, which is which is so it's very it's very odd. When when I I'm Kilimanjaro, no electricity, no internet, and of course no TV. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> we're, this we're is at, a bit more commercialized. Yeah, whereas a lot more commercialized. Um, again, we're staying in these tea houses. You can buy internet. Um, you can pay for a shower. Oh. Right? Yeah, you can pay for a shower. That's, that's oh, so, but, but the the when you go to these trips, uh, those who organize it, you pay them a bit. So do you have to pay for every meal or is it all yeah, inclusive? Yeah, yeah. So you, you have to pay for every meal. You have to pay for every meal. Okay. They organize the tea houses. So that was paid for with your original fee. But you have to pay for every meal. You pay for water. You pay for... You pay for everything, basically. Everything. Even showers. Oh, yeah, shower. Yeah. And do you have like... A stack of, of of bills, or do you do you have like credit cards? It's just credit cards that they accept. So they they give you again a rundown before that to expect to pay about or spend sorry about forty to sixty U.S. dollars a day. Okay, uh, I was on the higher end because I'm a big boy, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I would probably closer to seventy to eighty dollars a day. And then too, because you're burning so many calories, you're burning two to three thousand calories a day. You yeah. have to you have to eat a lot. Yeah. Right. And I think that was one of my mistakes too with Kilimanjaro is that I did not eat enough. I ate, a, I, I ate what I typically would eat on a regular day. Oh, uh, okay. Is, you know, accommodating for the additional two or three thousand calories that you're burning just from walking. Right. So okay. Yeah. So that was, that was like lesson number two. Do you do you see uh, along the way on the path? I mean, do you see crosses? Do you, like I, I mean, I imagine. I mean, you're at base camp, base camp to the peak. I was told you see dead people along the way. You see like crosses or you see, not people actually, you see bodies or you see, what what, what do you see along the way besides nature? Well, you see the one site, I can't remember how high we were, but let's say we probably above sea level. There was like a memorial in a graveyard. Um, okay. So the time for that. So you had, I don't know, maybe 80 to 90 um, grave sites that um, I guess they were commemorating so individual or climbers and Sherpas that that passed um, that didn't make it. And our guide told us, so we were their second tour for the season. Mm -hmm. And our guide told us on a previous tour that the last stop that we made, that we made before base camp, so you're talking about 60,000 feet above sea level, um, somebody died in the same tea house. Um, that we stayed at just yes. out yeah they were just eating in the main lobby where or not in the lobby sorry the the eating area yeah where, um, where we usually have lunch dinner and they just literally keeled over and so this was a i'm assuming a few weeks before we got here and someone else had passed as well in another tea house but same area and with that was and then that was a bit surprising to me because i I, act, I didn't actually think people passed away at that level Right. Mm -hmm. I know, like you said, we've heard we climb a lot higher, closer to summit. So, you know, much higher. So you're talking 25,000 feet. Yeah. Yes. People are die. You know, their bodies are left there frozen for years upon years and so on. But I didn't think that people would actually die at, at the level that we were going at. So that was a bit shocking. And of course, good on him. He didn't tell us that until we were on our way down. <laughs> <laughs> but did that cross your mind? Because a lot of people, yeah, you know, you talked about people. About Mount Everest, and often you got to explain, okay, this is just the base camp. We're not going all the way to the, the peak yeah. and all that, but there's always that idea of, of death. It's like, how does that cross your mind, and what do you think about that? Yeah, and, and uh, I think it crossed my mind a lot because you have, you know, leading up to it, you, you're training and so on, and then more and more people are finding out that you are climbing to base camp. So why people do this, I have no idea. So so if anyone who's listening to <laughs> someone that's taking on shots like this, I would get messages or yeah. hey, you know, through Instagram and so on saying, oh my gosh, look at this video. It's basically somebody dying or, or just a body. Oh, oh, so so family and friends would tell you, look yeah. at this video. 
Don't go, Brian. What are you doing? It's crazy. Don't be doing this. Yeah, days leading up to the trip where it's you know it's too late. <laughs> Rather don't. than encouraging you, they're kind of bring dragging you down. Don't yeah. do this. Right, which again, you know, you relate it back to real estate, right? You know, the family and friends are the ones who are typically telling you not to, not to do it, right? Real yeah. estate is crazy, but, but uh, yeah. So you think about it definitely, but it's it's at the back of your mind, right? Mm -hmm. What I try to do is focus on what I can control, yeah. And you know, which is why I went to base camp because I'm not a technical climber, and so I thought base camp would be a huge challenge, but still manageable. Mm -hmm. And so, again, you focus on what you can control, right? Training, having your body, eating well, no alcohol, and doing what's in your control. Focus on what's in your control. You, you sound stronger mentally and physically from doing this. It seems as if, what's the next step? Like, what, what other, like, I only, I, I'm not a climber. What's after Mount Everest? It's like, yeah. it's and, not, and I'm glad you made that comment, Renee, because I tell people too, and they probably laugh at me, but. I'm not a climber either, Renee. Like we've known each other for years. I'm not a climber either. I, I this is your second point. climb. This is your second, second climb. climb. But you feel much more confident after that we did after I, this I one. Definitely, right? And I guess in the climbing realm, I'm seasoned considering the two mountains that I climbed. Yep. Um, but again, the focus is to push myself, to build resilience, to put myself in situations where I can be uncomfortable. And, and, yes, and learn I'm, about yourself. And and I, feel, I, feel, I feel, I feel, you know, you know what they say: the, the, the man is is often revealed in difficult, painful situations. Yeah, well said. Absolutely, absolutely. And once you start putting yourself in those situations, you become a stronger person, right? Because you built that experience in putting yourself mm -hmm. in stressful situations, in uncomfortable situations. So, what's next? So one of the things I started doing this year is. Last year, I said, okay, I'm going to push myself. I'm going to do some type of challenge that once a year. This year, as I planned out my year, I said, I'm going to do three challenges, right? Not, um, nothing as challenging as, as Everest. So this year, I, I, of course, signed up for Everest, and I did that, which was fantastic. I'm going to do a 10K at the end of July. And I hey, signed have you done Have you done a 10K before? I did one last year. Okay. Uh, but the goal is to, to beat my record. Nice. And I find I find running to be one of the most challenging, mentally challenging things you could possibly do. Um, so I want to continue. I'm going to continue doing that. And then I also signed up for an Ironman in Ooh. late October, five hour Ironman. I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, not Ironman. Sorry, uh, um, a, a triathlon. Spartan. Sorry, Spartan, a Spartan. So what's a Spartan? So it's basically I'll call it a mini Ironman where you're doing a bunch of different obstacles. You know, you do it. You're doing like monkey bars. You're doing. You're climbing up a mountain. Like yeah. so this one, maybe on a blue mountain. Um, it's just a whole bunch of different. It's like an obstacle course for adults, but it's extremely challenging, right? Which is why it takes four hours. Four hours and running. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what would you suggest for anyone looking to do looking to climb Mount Everest? What would you suggest? Preparation, like anything else in life, is key. Prepare. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of research on how to prepare, what to expect. So that I find what works well for me is once I have a pretty good understanding of what to expect, I'm able to train for it. And then once I yeah. train for it, it makes me very comfortable. So preparation. Do your research. Know what to expect. And be okay with not making it to the top. You know. You want to oh yeah, yeah. No, but, like the results. Sometimes we, we expect the results to occur, and if they don't occur, then we're unhappy about it. Exactly, exactly. So I would say, cliche: enjoy the journey. Right. Mm. When I climbed Kilimanjaro, you know, had I not made it, I would have been devastated. I would have been embarrassed. I mean, that whole <laughs> I would have been embarrassed, right? Yeah. You know, truthfully. Whereas when I went to Everest, I was at peace, knowing that if I didn't make it, I was okay with that. Now, obviously, I wanted to make it and I yeah. would push myself and do everything that I could physically and mentally do to get me there. But I was at peace knowing that if I don't make it, then I'm okay with that. Right. So enjoy the journey. Enjoy each step and just and prepare. Yeah. Did you prepare your will before you went? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Well, well, I did my will. I, I, did, <laughs> actually, I actually, which is terrible. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, no, last year, January. So 
So before Kilimanjaro. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Before Kilimanjaro. So I had my I put my will in place <laughs> last year. And, and what did your family think after your back? Your family friend, what did they what did they say after your back? Those, those naysayers as well, those who were discouraging you from going. Well, you know what, Renee? One of the things I found most surprising mm -hmm. is how much feedback I got from people saying how inspiring it is, how inspiring it is to them, right? And yeah. I never for the life of me expected anyone to say anything as kind as that or to, or let alone to inspire anyone. And so that, you know, that made me feel warm and fuzzy to know that mm -hmm. you potentially made a small impact in someone's life that will hopefully you know push them to do something that's going to challenge them and 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 for me that's very rewarding right the, getting all those comments saying that you know my brand uh, friend is just you know very inspiring i'd love to do something like that or i want to do something like that and i would encourage again everyone to you know take action find something that's going to push you challenge you make you uncomfortable and and book it and so, so your plan wasn't to inspire people no, no. Um, again, I heard those comments too when I climbed Kilimanjaro. Definitely was not the plan. I heard similar comments, and this time around, it wasn't to inspire people. But the more I hear it, you know, the more I want to, you know, impact people's lives by inspiring them or showing them that they, you know different challenges or things are possible, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's climbing the mountain or whether it's building a huge real estate portfolio or building wealth. You know, these things are possible, which is why I teach, you know, as you know. It's, yes, yes, yes. I teach to give back, to pay forward, I should say. And if I can inspire someone or help someone build you know, their, or achieve financial freedom, then to me, that's amazing. That is amazing. And uh, what's what's the group looking like now? Has the group, uh, is the group bigger now? Like Kilimanjaro, you had all these people following, and then now there's five, six. Are there, is the group bigger and stronger, more connected? The group is definitely bigger. The group is definitely bigger, which, <laughs> which is cool. And and I think what also makes it amazing is, you know, you have people from all over the world, right? We have climbers from Ireland, Scotland, England, Australia. Oh, that was an amazing accent. Oh, the accents are just a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> the accents are just a hoot. But, uh, but yeah, the group is bigger. And again, it... We all support and encourage each other, and we're and we're looking for the next challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, any any regrets? No regrets. No regrets. no regrets. What I would things I'm considering for next time is this climb was really long. It was 15 days, and then I got there two days before. I stayed two days after, so that was like 19 days. Mm -hmm. Then travel time, so you're looking at about. 20, so I was gone for about three weeks. Three weeks is a long time. Yeah. Um, so my next my next challenge regardless of what it is, I will look at the time and um, and try to keep it between maybe, I don't know, maybe two weeks between what I did with Killy and, and Everest, I think will be a good, a good stretch for me. Awesome.